What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome to the Super People Optimization Guide. Yes, it's currently in Early Access Closed Beta or Closed Alpha in December 2021, but the steps from this guide should apply to the full release. And when the full release does come around, I'll probably do an update video. So if you're interested in that, stay subscribed. That being said, this video is only going to focus on optimizing Super People rather than focusing on Windows as well. If you haven't already optimized your Windows or you'd like some extra tips that you may not have had already, check the description down below for both a Windows 10, 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides, as well as related optimization guides to get even more out of your computer. With that out of the way, let's get straight into the super people focused optimization. First of all, we have some general tips on Windows. Obviously, make sure that Windows is fully up to date and your graphics card driver as well. Whether you download it off of the vendor's website, such as AMD or NVIDIA, or you use a program like NVIDIA GeForce Experience, as long as you're fully up to date, you should be getting the best FPS possible. The question of should you upgrade from Windows 10 to 11 for super people for better FPS? Well, it's the same answer I usually give. If you use Windows for more than just gaming, it's not really something you should be focusing on. I much prefer Windows 10 over 11 for productivity and gaming as a side thing. Whether I gain 5 FPS or not, I lose a ton of productivity because I'm not used to Windows 11 and or a lot of the features are straight up missing them or put out weirdly. That being said, it's completely up to you, though I wouldn't let any game sway your idea of whether you should update or not. You can still gain a ton of FPS from following guys such as this one and the ones in the description down below. With that out of the way, you download the game through Steam. If you haven't already got it, now's the best time to sign up for the beta, which you'll find a guide in the description down below. Basically, you head across to the store page, request access, and you're given the game. When you have it downloaded, simply locate it on your games list, right click it, hover over manage, and then click browse local files. When this window opens up here, you'll find a bunch of different programs. What we're looking for is inside of Bravo Hotel Game over here, then Binaries, Win64, and we're looking for Bravo Hotel Client, Shipping, etc, etc, .exe. This is the main game over here, and BE is the Battle Eye program. This, of course, will change on full release, probably, maybe the folder structure as well, but at least for December 2021, this is how it's laid out. Right click on the main game EXE and then click properties. In this new window here, head across to the compatibility tab and make sure disable full screen optimizations is checked. Then click change high DPI settings and inside of here, tick this tick box at the bottom, select application, click OK, apply and OK. Now, if you have more than one graphics card in your computer, it's a good idea to tell Windows to use the best one available. This is especially important on a laptop or notebook. Click at the very top of the folder, up in the path here, right click and copy it. We'll be using this in just a moment. Hit start and type in GPU, then open up graphics settings. Inside of this window, make sure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on and under graphics performance preference, select a desktop app, then click browse over here. When this new window pops up, we'll click at the very top and paste the address and then hit enter. You'll then locate Bravo Hotel Client, click it and click add. Then scroll down, select the program, click options and choose high performance, then save. Now the super people should use the best GPU available. We're done here. Click the home button next to graphics settings and then head into the gaming section of the settings window. On the Xbox Game Bar tab, make sure that this is turned off unless you specifically use some of the Xbox Game Bar features. Then head across to Game Mode and make sure that this is turned on for better FPS in game. Finally, something you're probably well aware of is that recording games can take away some performance. By default, if you've used Game Bar in the past and on most computers, it'll automatically have some kind of Shadow Play equivalent running in the background, recording your game all the time. It's a very good idea to turn it off. You used to be able to do it here in the Captures menu, but what you need to do now is hit Start, then type in Game Bar and open up the Xbox Game Bar. Inside of here, click the Settings wheel at the very top, then head down to Capturing and make sure that Record in the background while I'm playing a game is turned off. Then you can close this and click anywhere to close the Game Bar. And now we're done with the Settings window here. Talking about resources on our computer, one of them that's very important is hard drive or SSD space. This can affect performance if things are really full, and of course it's always good to free up extra space. Hit start and type in clean, where we'll be opening disk cleanup as administrator. When it opens up, simply select C drive, the one with windows on it, and then click OK. Wait for it to scan through temporary files on your computer, and when the window opens up, 
Simply select everything on the list, except for a cycle bin, which you can manually go through later and clear out yourself. And if you're like me, work with a lot of images, you may want to leave thumbnails unchecked, as generating thumbnails for lots of images and folders can take some time. Then when you've selected what you can clear off of your hard drive, you'll be saving a couple hundred megs to a couple gigs. Click OK and delete files, then wait for this to run through to completion. Now, if you have the game installed on a drive different to your Windows drive, simply open it up once again as administrator, select the other drive and rinse and repeat all the steps there. Now, speaking of limited resources, it's a very good idea to make sure that you have as little running as possible while you're playing any game for the best performance. Hold Control Shift and press Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. And inside of here, on the Processes tab, you can sort by CPU, Memory and GPU to see which resources are going where. All you have to do is try and close as many background programs as possible, leaving as many resources available for the game as possible. That way, it can run well. If you see you're closing a lot of the same programs every time you're playing a game, head across to the Startup tab at the very top and sort by status. Everything listed as enabled will start up whenever your computer logs in or boots up. That can, of course, affect startup time and leads to more programs running in the background. Simply locate anything you don't want starting up with your computer or don't need starting up with your computer, right click and then click disable so that you have to manually open it yourself. If you're a power user, you can head across to services at the very top, click open services and inside of this window here, sorting by startup type, everything listed as automatic starts up with your computer much in the same way. You can double click on anything here and change it from startup type automatic to manual, meaning that either you or a program that needs the service running in the background has to start up the service in order to use it. That means less running on your computer and therefore a better performance in games as there's more resources available. Speaking of, something you may want to look out for is using too many overlays, if overlays at all. I personally find that using the Discord overlay makes me drop a couple of FPS and gain quite a bit of input latency, making playing games quite an unpleasant experience. This can of course happen with anything that draws over your screen, including overlays from Discord, Steam, etc, etc. Those programs also use something called hardware acceleration. It's something that you may want to turn off if your graphics card is reaching 100% and your CPUs sitting happily on like 10. Hardware acceleration in programs like Discord and Steam uses more of the GPU over CPU, which can take away from performance in games while you're doing certain things or you just have them open. If you disable hardware acceleration, you're freeing up the GPU space and instead you'll be using more of your CPU in those programs, balancing the load, and of course allowing more of your graphics card to be able to be used in programs that use a lot of it. Super simple. Now, finally, with all the pre-optimization out of the way, let's fire up the actual game itself and optimize some of the settings there. For this, I'll open up Steam and click play under Super People. If it's your first time launching the game, you'll see a pop-up saying something like this, recommending that you install the game on an SSD, which is of course something you should do for the best performance. But most of the time, if you have a small SSD and bigger hard drives, you'll be making the performance sacrifice and install it there instead. It's not the end of the world if you do install it on a hard drive. By default, this game is pretty well optimized out of the gate, or rather it picks pretty low settings. If we click the settings button in the top right, then settings, followed by graphics, you'll see that I'm currently limited to 60 in the menu and everything's set to about medium. When I started up the game, it started up in windowed 1080, so I had to go into either borderless or full screen in order to get it all the way to the size of my monitor. Now, quickly before I hop into a game, usually you'll want to put the display mode on full screen to get the best possible FPS, though in some games this doesn't really make too much of a difference, depending on what kind of computer you have. Make sure maximum frame rate is set to unlimited, or of course you can cap it down to something low if it's eating your entire graphics card and making things like OBS stutter. If you'd like to change the resolution, note that you will have to have the display mode in full screen first. Limiting lobby frame rate doesn't really matter. Vertical sync you should only have on if you're experiencing screen tearing, otherwise leaving it on unnecessarily will result in higher input latency. Have this off. Smooth frame rate should also be set to off. Nvidia Reflex low latency can either be turned on as such, or you can choose only latency boost, or you can have enable both, which is latency plus boost. They do give some detailed information on the right hand side here. What does what? Usually you'll just leave this on on, which is default low latency mode. Brightness is user preference. 
Now, just to get an idea of how bad FPS can get, on my 1080 Ti at 2K, I'll be cranking up settings to usually rather high settings that you may only want to play on in certain scenarios. Now, because I have the game installed on a hard drive, I'm unable to crank it higher than high. It needs to be on an SSD or something that's detected as an SSD in order to push this higher. There's probably a workaround, but it's fine where it is on high. Let's quickly get a benchmark in game and see what and see what it looks like. Head back and let's find ourselves a game. For this, I'll be hopping into a solo. Now, of course, FPS is going to be different depending on where you are on the map, what map you're playing, etc, etc. With everything set to high on a 1080 Ti, we'll see what kind of FPS I get. To keep things consistent, the best idea on collecting FPS is probably here in this little lobby section while everyone's connecting to the game. We're already on the ground and we can see what kind of FPS we're getting. For some reason, the counter in the top left isn't working, but you can see I'm sitting around 73, 74 FPS, which is really good, especially considering this game's running on high, though it could be pushed even higher if I was on an SSD. This is a 1080 Ti running at 2K, which is really good out of the gate. We're not going to change settings too much so that things end up blurry, but we are going to change them so we get much better FPS. Usually you'll only need to do this on lower end computers as this is more than fine already. So exiting back out to the menu here, let's head into settings once again, graphics and scrolling down past the display section, we now get to advanced settings. FOV will affect how much FPS you're getting, but this is completely user preference. I'd much rather have higher FOV than worry about FPS. Rendering size should be set to 100%. This is the render scale. Anything lower than that will make the game look blurry. Instead, you'll be using an option at the bottom that we'll get to in a moment. Overall, graphics quality changes all of the settings below it, and this is what you'll play around with if you'd like to see the most dramatic change. Of course, set this to what your PC is. A 1080 Ti can very happily handle high, so set that as is. If you have something worse than a 1080 Ti, set this down to medium or low. For super low end, maybe even integrated graphics, you'll want to have this on very low. Usually, the lower settings are, the better the FPS you'll get, though that is only to some extent. The textures is completely VRAM dependent, and the information on the right hand side shows that very well. You can set it to the options here that match your graphics card as it won't affect FPS too much, though it will definitely help with how the game looks overall. I'd much rather have a good looking game by having this on medium or even high than gaining a couple of FPS from pushing this down lower. Shadows is somewhere where a lot of your FPS will vanish, so you'll usually want to turn this down to very low, especially because in Twitch shooters you're not going to be staring at shadows. View distance is usually important in games, but as you can see, this setting does not affect the distance at which players are visible. So not only does having this higher make sure more objects are between you and other players, it renders in more things at once. So having this on anything but very low, no matter what your overall graphics quality is, is kind of stupid. You can get rid of objects and see players from further away by having this set down to very low. The same goes to foliage. The lower this is, the less there is on screen, grass, vegetation, etc. Raising your FPS, but also raising your visibility. That's very important in a battle royale. Effects down here only really affects explosions, smoke, etc. And if you experience frame drops at random moments, this is something you need to turn down. I'll usually leave this on very low, as I don't really care how explosions or anything like that look. I'm playing it more for the gameplay. Shaders over here is a rather important one, as it affects lighting. The higher this is, the more graphics power it's going to take to run. Usually you'll set this to low or very low, though if you notice too much of a change in lighting or you start to experience experience flickering in shadows, this is something you may want to turn up. If you're getting flickering in shadows only, you can try raising the shadow quality as well. Scrolling down further, we have anti-aliasing, which you should always set down to the lowest possible, in this case very low, otherwise things may either end up blurry, or you may be losing FPS for no reason. Of course, if you absolutely hate jagged edges, then this is something you may want to turn up at least a little bit. Post-processing should be turned all the way down to very low as well, as these are added effects afterwards that may affect your vision. Depth of field should absolutely be turned off unless you're taking screenshots, as if you're trying to see people at distance or close by, this is definitely something that's going to affect you if they end up blurry. The sharpen effect down here is on 2 by default, so that's where I'll be leaving it. That's up to your preference, however. At the very bottom, we finally get to resolution scaling, and these are rather exciting. NVIDIA DLSS you'll only have access to on a RTX or above graphics card, as that's the only place where it's supported. 
If you have it available, that is what you should be using in order to gain a ton of FPS for basically no visual impact. If you have any NVIDIA graphics card, not just RTX, you may be interested in using their brand new NIS technology, which is similar to AMD FSR, which is the next option here. Check the description down below for a complete guide on that. If you're someone like me on a non-RTX graphics card, whether it's NVIDIA or AMD, you can use AMD Fidelity FXSR. The further to the right this is, the more performance you'll be getting, though the lower the resolution of the game will be, and it'll be upscaled with processing. Usually it's best to have this on lower settings, but the further to the right you push it, the more unnatural your game's gonna look as it's scaled up, but you'll also get a ton more FPS the further you push this. Usually I'll leave this on ultra quality or quality, or nothing at all. Just for now, I'll leave this on disable, and with only our settings up here changed, I'll click apply. Then on the audio tab, there's nothing we can change here other than maybe music that you may want to turn down. And of course, voice chat if you find that annoying in game. Controls and key settings, as well as gameplay, there's not much here that we need to change. So heading back, back again, and firing up another game, let's see how our FPS has changed. So now we're dropped back here, I'll confirm out of this menu, and as you can see, I'm sitting at a comfortable 110-ish FPS. This is a pretty good improvement, oh, all the way up to 120, 130, things are still rising as more things are loading in. It should stabilize around 130, we're now reaching 140, and we're looking over a ton of the map. This is incredibly good, especially because we've now optimized it for our computer. As you can see, there's some distracting shadows over there. They seem to be rendering in some kind of checkerboard there as well. And that'll usually happen with lower shadow settings, though everything besides that looks really good, except for maybe the railings here, which may be distracting for you, in which case you'll need to raise anti-aliasing. Same goes for the shadows up there. They seem a bit checkerboardy. But other than that, visibility is absolutely great. I can see off to a really far distance and there's a bit of popping over there as that's the distance on a very low. The building is not rendering from here, but if we move up a bit closer, now it is. I'm not too sure if you can see players inside of the building when you're over here and it isn't loading in for you. As it said, view distance doesn't affect players. But if it does, that's absolutely huge as I'm probably, what, maybe 500 meters, 700 meters away from this thing here. And if I can see through the wall, that's already a great improvement in visibility, meaning, hey, we're probably going to see more than we actually should. Though I'm not too sure what the player render distance is anyways. Regardless, the game looks pretty good as is. It is all really up to your preference, however, so if you need to turn something up for the game to look better, don't be afraid to. This video was more of an outline for how to get higher FPS, and of course, if you'd like to get even more FPS out of the game, do check the description down below. But regardless, that's really about it for this video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Zeknoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.